Okay, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. Um, just a bit of housekeeping before we crack on. This morning we worked through the proposed amendments that were able to be debated and decided on today. We also voted on noting provisions asking for more information and analysis. There were other amendments proposed by councillors and all proposed amendments and accompanying staff advice has been tabled on the big table list to be included in the minutes. This will help councillors provide updates on projects and direct their community to, to the staff advice on these topics. But in keeping with the formal process, and to make the Secretariat's job easier, I want to formally note that I have taken staff advice on those amendments not otherwise discussed today, but included in this table and rule them out of order as per Standing Order 17.1. Now that's just housekeeping, so don't panic. Okay. So now we're up to number 20, adopt, uh, all good. We now need to adopt the attachments B, C, D to the annual plan report, recommendations four to six. I'm gonna move it, Pauline's happy to second it, and we'll put it straight to the vote if no issues. Uh, all those in favour? Against, thank you, carried. Right, and before we move to adopt the annual plan itself, we need to take note the thematic analysis the management sign-off process and the management sign-off for significant forecasting assumptions. Their recommendations seven to nine. I'll move it. Pauline will second it. And I'll put that straight to the vote. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Thank you very much. So now we come to the, the main act. And tell us the good news, Liv. <laughs> Put your mic on there. Uh, apologies. Um, so we've just done a one slide up there for you so you can see the impact of the decisions that were made today um, and for the ones that can't read that part. Uh, so it's so we've now, we had, came in this morning with a recommended 6.33. Overall we're now at 6.41, uh, which is a average residential increase of 6.6. .6 business average of 5.71 and rural average of negative 0.48. The average house will have a rates increase of $4.01 per week or annually $208.57. So now we just, we've just we updated the uh, recommendations that you will adopt shortly to have the decimals in there. The only thing, and I know you've just <laughs> topped at those, the only change we made to the 4 to 6 is that attachments B, C and D obviously have to be updated. You've adopted them, but they have to be updated from today's changes. Uh, we're, we're good, we're just not good enough to do that in an hour. Okay, so that was the only thing. All good? Yep. Nothing else? All happy? Sorry? Four. Okay. Four dollars and one cent. Correct. So now we move on. <clears throat> we will now have the opportunity to debate the annual plan as a whole. Mm -hmm. Members will have three minutes each to speak, but before we get on to that, I'd, I'd just like to say we, we've, um, I'd like to thank everyone else, uh, everyone for what we've been doing today, but if we don't need to debate it, if you're happy with where you're sitting, you don't, if, don't feel that you have to say something. If you don't want to, don't, uh, don't fret. So I'm moving it, um, Pauline's seconding it, and I will start with Yanni if he wants to, but feel free to say nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but feel um, free to say anything, Bob. Maybe happy to wait to the end if you'd like me to. to see no, no, no. To say. no, 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 no. I'm starting going up up the table like that. Okay, cool. Um, well, just to, I mean to start off, I just did want to specifically ask that my vote be recorded against Jay and against um, M. Um, so if that could just be recorded um, and also just the um, I'm not quite sure the exact one but the I think it's the general rate uh, B so I just wanted to note that um, I appreciate the work that staff have done in very extraordinary circumstances but to me one of the challenges that we still have is that when we put forward ideas to save money, um, the Takaha Streets, for example, it gets ruled out of order. This has kind of been a common pattern in recent years where um, attempts to save money are often not accepted. And I just think, you know, if you look at the Park Terrace 
uh, way in which we put something in there, and regardless of the process, I'm just talking about the physical, low cost, flexible interventions to see what works to make a difference in behavior or try and get a difference in behavior to improve safety, to me, to me seems a lot more cost effective way of doing things than our current approach, which is to spend huge amounts of money on very inflexible and hardwired solutions that then are very costly to change. And I mean, St. Nassau Street and Chilham Street are probably the best examples of that in the city. But I fear that we're about to do something similar with the Takaha Street. So I was disappointed that my resolution to save money wasn't adopted. But I, I also appreciate that we need a budget. Um, but I am concerned that the revaluation has meant that for those in the lowest socioeconomic areas are faced with the highest percentage increase, which to me is inherently unfair. Um, so, you know, I think we needed to um, look more at what we can do in that regard. Uh, and I, as such, I won't be supporting um, the general rate as is being proposed. I also think that uh, in terms of the water excess charge, I, I just want to comment, I've repeatedly again put forward options to try and save water um, through the use of uh, grey water re re reuse and rainwater collection. And again, people make submissions in support of these things, but they struggle to get traction around this table. And I, and I don't quite know why. If we want to save water, which I think we all do, I think there's far better ways of bringing people with us rather than having a divided community, as we saw from the consultation, which is kind of 50-50 down the middle. So um, I, I just think there's more that we can do in some of those areas. Um, but I do acknowledge the support for doing the ferry road transport plan. I, I do appreciate that. Um, I think the key thing is that we do need to look at synergy that we can get across projects uh, to be more cost effective and efficient, but also to do the things that people ask when they make submissions to us during an annual plan process. So um, thank you just to acknowledge the work that's being done. Um, I'll support the majority of what's in here, but I've raised the concerns of things that I feel uncomfortable with. Thank you. Thank you very much. Aaron. Yeah. Um, yeah, the, uh, uh, I didn't know you were doing it that way, Phil. Yeah, so um, I just, yeah, the, um, sorry. Uh, well, I just kind of want to, yeah, it is a bit. You're not stuck for words here, are you? Kind of. Uh, well, <laughs> I've got to be careful which ones I use now because <laughs> I tried to use big words this morning and it went very badly. Yeah. Uh, so I'm going to stick to no more than three syllables from here on in for the rest of my career. Um, I just want to say that, uh, 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 yes, we've come in under, um, under the rate of inflation, but the rate of inflation is currently unsustainable um, and the reason why, I mean one of the reasons with inflation being so high that the res government and the Reserve Bank keep putting our interest rates up is they're telling us to not spend money um, but government departments and councils seem to be exempt from that and keep spending lots of money uh, but I will take my hat off to quite a number of the, the team uh, in this organisation and various departments that have tried their best to come up with savings and uh, and so Leah, Dawn um, and everyone that works with you, uh, I do respect you for that. I think you guys have actually done a really, really good job. Um, I am going to, like I said earlier, uh, Andre had mentioned around the um, the work that we didn't do and, uh, and that is my only disappointment here is that I think when a lot of people are really hurting, we should have been looking at a lot more ways to save money and if we're going to try and make those savings next year, it's going to be even harder. Um, so I think we should have looked at that this year. We didn't, and that's a miss of this table, not the staff, because the staff were actually even offering stuff up earlier on that we weren't taking. And um, uh, so, uh, so that's that's my position. Okay, Celeste, you don't have to say you're all you're all good. Excellent, Andre. Thank you. Um, I think staff have done an amazing job along this process. The advice has been clear uh, and there's been all the assistance we need along the way. Um, as new elected members, we come in quite excited. We think we're going to do this awesome job. We're going to spend money really wisely. We'll find lots of savings and then deliver all of these great things. Um, then a few weeks into the job, we were sat down and told we're looking at a 14.6% rates increase. And we're thinking, ah, damn it. Um, there goes an enjoyable year. And staff did save the day. They gave us a number of options. 
um, and saved us from what would have been a rating disaster. Uh, our council voted against looking at all of the options. We did vote against uh, looking at operational expenditure. Uh, they, they may have not been good options, but I think we did owe it to ourselves and also particularly new members to at least be able to look and learn through the process. Uh, I have been frustrated by that. I feel like I haven't been able to look at all my options and be able to do my job properly in this regard. Uh, over the last few weeks, it's the opportunity for us to make amendments um, after the draft annual plan, and we were told that there's 55 amendments here. I thought, okay, surely there's a few good cost-saving measures in there. Um, there was only one. There was only one cost-saving measure that was able to reduce from the annual plan. Uh, yes, it was mine, although it was very, very minor. Um, there was one out of 55. I, there was one that was in order that was able to reduce it from the... the that, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, 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 that's quite different. It's quite different. Please don't interrupt. Um, so, yeah, I never intended to be a councillor that harps on about spending too much and lowering rates. Came in here as more of a left leaning progressive councillor. But just something I would like to point out is there is nothing left wing or progressive about rates that people can't actually afford to pay. Um, is something I've realised in this. There isn't. So, wanting cost cutting is not right wing, it's not left wing, it's just what we actually need to do. It's things need to be affordable for people. Uh, we're, if we're trying to put too many projects in, we end up disappointing both ourselves and the public later down the track if we're not able to deliver things. We're, we've, everything is going to take longer when we've got staff shortages and everything else. Um, we can't just continually be setting ourselves up for disappointment. I know a thing or two about setting myself up for disappointment because I renew my worry season ticket every single year. Mm. So but this is, this is our year and our year to avoid disappointment and we need to be doing the same at council, not setting ourselves up for disappointment. It is our year. It is our year to do that. Um, but look, I look forward to those robust discussions we have over the long-term plan. And I have, I had, I've already started putting my wish list together um, for my area. Would like, would like some roads and halls that are safe to drive on, some footpaths that don't exist currently, um, some places to cross the road um, safely um, that haven't been there for decades despite the subdivisions being there. Oh, and cost savings. So, won't be looking for too much, but it is some pretty core things that absolutely have to be done. That's me. Thank you. Well done, mate. Um, Mark. Thank you. Um, I'd like to acknowledge staff, particularly for all the fantastic work they've done through this process. It's been a heck of a journey, and I think it's been quite sobering and eye opening for a lot of us new members. Um, I concur with um, Councillor Moore there in the saying it was disappointing we weren't allowed to peek into the, the box of all the options that could realistically be available to us. Um, and hopefully going into the long-term plan, we can all be bold enough to you know, look at all these levers, um, look at the priorities with genuine eyes from the ratepayers and figure out what we need to have be, be doing going forward. Um, through this process, I've certainly learned a lot. I think there's a lot more I can yet learn and I'm happy to, to um, learn off some of my learned colleagues around here who've got more experience than I. So please feel free to um, impart your knowledge as we go through the next process. Um, but I'm really happy, I'm not entirely happy where we've landed, but 6.41 is better than 14.6 by a big stretch. And we've done a lot better than other councils we've seen around the country. So I think we've done a pretty, pretty damn good job. So well done, team. And um, looking forward to... Link, launching into that long-term plan process in the next few months and, and figuring out what's important to all of our communities and what we can actually afford to be doing and what we need to be doing going forward. So thank you, and let, let's get this uh, finalised. Okay. Yep, I'll support the budget as a whole this year because actually the process has been really, really good. We've worked collaboratively together and, and with staff to, to form it. However, the results of the amendments once taken into account and the political decisions we've made, now I worry that we're wittingly or unwittingly creating a financial headache for ourselves that serves to justify this, uh, the sale of our city's assets. Increasing the water excess water charge removes any incentive to change behaviour. Recognising all of our subvention receipts this year instead of paying down debt is just kicking the can down the road and automatically adds to next year's increase. Even the idea that we would dip into the capital endowment fund to offset rates is a bit of a joke, although I am glad we didn't do this to the fullest extent. 
some of my colleagues have justified their vote to not pay de down debt as an actual saving. I'm sorry, that's just a fairy tale. To defer a debt payment and, and to somehow pass it off as a saving because you promise to actually make a saving at some other point down the line is just dancing with the truth. It's like saying you're going to lose some weight and the first step you've taken is to buy smaller pants. Something I've done before. <laughs> and I can assure... <laughs> And I can assure new councillors that making substantial savings in the LTP is not easy. That's because the trade-offs are very real and because they're not really savings at all. They're service cuts, <clears throat> and, and the community hates cuts. There are no free lunches. It may be my, um, my, mental, health, uh, my mental challenges or my financial illiteracy, but even referring back to my colleague's uh, beautiful diagram before, it says roads, it says places to, what is it? <coughs> places to cross roads, and then it just says cost savings. None are identified. I can assure you it is not easy. So I think, unfortunately, we've been left, the position we've been left in today puts us between a rock and a hard place because we've chased a good headline, and unfortunately that means next year we're going to have to either pass on a large rate increase or we're going to have to close swimming pools and libraries down early or we're going to have to sell the family silver. These are the choices we have lined up for ourselves next year. Thank you, Jake. Tyler. I'll be very quick, Mr Mayor. And uh, providing my gratitude to staff firstly with such a robust uh, way in dealing with the annual plan, uh, I had a really positive um, experience in this annual plan process and ensuring that I see everything that is put in front of me and understanding it to the highest extent. The next thing I want to talk about is actually thanking my colleagues because this this is really cool being able to be split and we're sitting on the fence here between um, what our decisions are and what that means is that means that we've got a really healthy relationship between each other and I think it's really good seeing that in comparison to prior years where it became quite heated. <laughs> so that is why I'm really looking forward to working together in the long term plan to ensure that we're working together positively and engaging with our communities in the right way to ensure that we're getting the best for our city from every single aspect of every single ward. I also um, am happy to accept this budget that sits in front of us and uh, I am going to live with every decision that I make and I'll happily live with every decision that I make. And as a decision maker and all of us, we all know that we sometimes have those regrets. And I'm trying my very, very best to not regret any one decision that I make. So I'm going to sit with that. And actually, Councillor Goff brought this up really, really well. Um, a, a wee while ago, actually, it was really good advice, was talking about um, voting with your heart, not your head. And that's something that I'm going to try and continue to do. Uh, and I also had some highlights of the day, particularly talking about one of my childhood heroes, Robin Hood. Um, I think that was a, a nice touch, because Robin Hood is a hero. No reda, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, tēnā koutou, Kia ora. Well done, mate. Um, Kelly. Thanks, sir. <clears throat> um, yeah, as a new councillor, I found this whole kind of process uh, quite fascinating. Uh, I'd really hope that we could come in at the start and um, and look at a, a very low rates increase. But when the depth of the problem started to develop, and we saw that it was going to be around fourteen percent increase, um, yeah, it was uh, it was a bit a bit scary. But you know, I just have to <clears throat> really commend staff on the work that they did on this uh, to to watch the way they went away and keep making changes, keep bringing new solutions to us, you know, culminating in the, uh, in the, in the 10 million, you know. Um, and I think that's absolutely fantastic. Uh, they heard what we had to say. And um, I just think it's that interesting <clears throat> when we're trying very hard to save pennies at every level, um, yet government is spending money and offering us incentives for various things like cycleways and uh, to make three waters more palatable and things like that. Um, it just makes me think how perhaps chronically unfunded uh, local government is and could be better uh, resourced because these things would make a big difference to us. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think we've done uh, really well considering uh, what we've been up against uh, in terms of inflation increasing. Um, and I, I think we've really done our best to, to come up with something that's really suitable for the rate players. Rate players. Um, and I think of, we've been talking about sayings this morning, and I think that uh, my favourite one has always been, if you think you can or you think you can't, you can't, you're right. Um, and I think we've got this one right.
Thank you. Sarah. Kia ora. Um, past residents of Otatahi Christchurch have invested heavily in the infrastructure uh, that we have currently and, and set things up in a way that as a city and district, we can all benefit from shared resources that would be incredibly expensive should we all choose to buy them all individually. It would be prohibitively expensive if we were, if we were all having to do our own water supply, for example, or our own road or, or whatever it was. Uh, and their investments over this period of time need to be honoured. Um, we need to maintain what they have uh, provided for us that has allowed us to live what is, internationally speaking, a high quality standard of life. Um, but we also need to follow their lead and we need to continue to invest for future residents of the city and not let the city stagnate uh, or go backwards. We have a mostly rebuilt city, but we had huge earthquake impacts and they are ongoing. The Deloitte um, report from several years ago showed that even after all the insurance money was spent, there was still a $4 billion gap between what we had done and what was needed to fix our infrastructure. And we also need to plan and we need to prepare because we know that there are future challenges. The last 12 years have been extraordinary, but year on year, they have um, given us challenges after challenge after challenges, floods, fires, mosque shooting, um, earthquakes, pandemic, everything. And Councillor McClellan's right. It is not easy to make cuts in an LTP. There is so little of that left in this organisation. Um, during COVID, we made significant cuts um, and anything that was easy is gone already. And let me remind people about the facts, about the choice not to do an amended LTP. Staff gave us the option because that was something that they legally had to do. We could have, had we chosen, looked at levels of service and additional cuts, but that would have meant a huge amount of additional resource, additional time, and additional money to go through an amended LTP process, which is legally what it would have required if we were to look at levels of service, and we're going to be doing one of those next year anyway. We simply didn't have the resources, and so we agreed with the staff advice <coughs> not to do that. Our current funding system, as the Future for Local Government um, report says, is completely at peak, and the next government needs to look seriously um, at resourcing councils properly so that we can do the jobs that they have delegated us to do. It is completely unsustainable um, and we need to make sure that we're looking at the counterfactual every time as what happens if we don't. Spot on. Tim. Yeah, thank you lots. Um, we've got 17 people around this table. So when we're offered a, a black box or whatever to look into and look at um, savings and people are disappointed that we haven't picked this one up or that one up, we represent different areas. And what we think is a great... Um, way to solve a problem may be absolutely apparent to another community. So I think we've got to respect that. <clears throat> and and I, I hope that in the future there's less comment about the, the haves and the have-nots because a lot of haves actually don't have that much because after COVID they are mortgaged to the hilt to keep their businesses going. So I just hope there's a wee bit more respect with regards to that because irrelevant of where you live, your rate dollar should be equal to anyone else. That's the society I hoped that we live in. Um, as for asset sales, I'm, I'm a bit surprised about that one. We've been around that merry-go-round a number of times, and um, my community has made it very, very clear that it is not for discussion, and I will stick by that. As for closing facilities, I've been struggling to uh, rebuild the South Library, so uh, let's just keep going with that one, because I'm not going to close facilities either. Um, when we talk about what the future's going to be, who here can tell us what the three waters is going to cost us or save us? We have absolutely no idea. But around this table, we have made the best decisions that we possibly can for our community and our city. And yes, we will have differences, but I think that we have come to a very good end and to move forward on that and to do it respectfully with each other. I do want to make a special mention to our CFO and her, her our team. It's not just you, Leah, just you know, spreading the joy. Um, 
but also um, one group that don't get mentioned that often is our community board staff who every week try and squeeze the absolute juice out of that lemon they can. And sometimes it is sour to suck, but they work incredibly hard and um, at times they actually make us look quite good. So to all of the staff, thank you very much. Cheers. bunch of us in this room who have on some level had to wear what we've been bequeathed, and that's fine. Um, the ones who had no hand in the last long-term plan, that's not a complaint. That's not a complaint. It's just simply a statement of fact, and we're raring to go, I think, for the long-term plan next year. I'm committed as a councillor to keep working with my colleagues around this table, all of you, uh, to find innovative ways for Christchurch, um, you know, our city, that we, that we work um, you know, that we love and, and, and work in and work on together um, to be the best run, most livable city in New Zealand, if it isn't already. Um, but we may have left ourselves a mountain to climb in the next year long-term plan, so we need to get stuck into that and we'll do it together. Kia ora. Thank you. Um, I'd like to start by putting this annual plan in perspective. It really is just merely an adjustment to the previous long-term plan. <coughs> And uh, picking up on the thread that um, <clears throat> Councillor Field and some of the others have said that this we haven't really had a great deal of, of room to move. And I do think that the real work is yet to come with the next long-term plan, and it simply has to be different to previous long-term plans. I'm really looking forward to some robust discussions during the long-term plan process, and I'm um, really pleased to see the collaborative efforts around this table, and I think it puts us in good stead going into a long-term plan. I'm pleased to see a focus on deliverability in the plan, and I really applaud staff for your adaptability. I think that's critical to how we operate. On balance, I'm satisfied that the increases that we've seen are, for the most part, unavoidable, and I think the revised timings for Takaha really is a double-edged sword. They say you have to take the good with the bad, but in this instance, I think we have to take the bad with the good. Uh, and in a similar vein, I recognise that the timing of the three yearly re-evaluation uh, is less than ideal and it has had a, a greater impact on some areas of our city. Uh, that aside, I think that the amendments that we've uh, debated today and over recent months uh, make good sense. I think for the most part we've been supplied mm. with sound evidential basis for the changes that we've made uh, and I think uh, what we've been presented with and the options we've had represent prudent financial management, thank you for that. And we have adopted a fair and transparent process. And again, I thank my colleagues for their uh, collaborative approach uh, in this process. And whilst the result where we've landed is not perfect, I do think it is well balanced, all things considered. And so I will be supporting the plan. Thanks. Um, let me um, thank you all for your support with the small amendment I had around the meeting room fees for the rooms in the Taranga Library today. And I'm pleased that other colleagues at the end of the table who have supported unanimously with their amendments have also acknowledged that support in their debate today. Or maybe I just heard them incorrectly. 
I may not agree with every decision that's being made, and in fact, I'm actually terrified about what the future will bring and how our decisions today may potentially put us in a precarious position. This invention payment, which feels like an apparent saving now, will cost us more in the future, the very near future, and I don't believe it's a win for the residents of Christchurch at all. In fact, many of the decisions today around UAGC and water charging in particular are a loss for those who have less and a win for those who have more. And I think that's a shame, and I think we should reflect on that. Overall, though, I will support this annual plan today, like I do every year. We've worked together through a process to come to a decision, and I will respect that process. Thank you, Melanie. Um, James. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> look, as we've gone through this process, you know, it's been a case of you win some and you lose some. We've you know, had examples of that today going through um, the, the various items. Um, but it's much more than just that. This has been you know, a pretty long process. Uh, there's a long one to come with LTP, so um, this, was, this was just the warm-up. Um, you know, significant changes will need to occur going forward, and you know, Councillor Peters wanted to look in the box for savings. Um, I think I would have too, actually. Uh, we would have liked to you know, really get in there and <laughs> see what we could find. But um, <laughs> look, the thing is we can go through, we can go through all of this for so long, and at the end of the day, um, this is a light version of what is fundamentally um, the long-term plan next year is where these changes will, uh, will occur. So look, I, I think um, I'm not going to rehash the, the debates we'd had a, along the way today um, and in the briefings and the workshops, but I think what does need to be said is uh, you know, acknowledgement to you, Dawn. Um, really appreciate with the way you've led this organisation. Um, Leah as well, really appreciate your work. Peter, Lynn, Helen, uh, and, and also Megan and your team who put up with us and keep us on track. Um, so it's very much appreciated for, from me because we'd all be lost without you. Um, and like I said, you know, we've had our battles along the way. We've won some, we've lost some. But I think we're at a point where fundamentally we can strike a rate, and that's the job for the annual plan, and to really get in there and make those changes, um, we can do that uh, next year. Um, thank you to the, my colleagues, though. Uh, as I've said, we, we don't agree on all things all the time, but I've really enjoyed working with you through this process. I actually think we work together uh, pretty damn well, even if we don't all agree. So um, I really do genuinely mean uh, my, uh, my thanks that I'm offering. Um, and last but you know, not least, actually, Phil, you know, you've led this as well. This is your first annual plan, and Yay. I have to take my hat off to you that I think you've led it incredibly well. You know, it's it's been uh, professional. You've kept us on track, and you've also ensured that we're you know giving the attention to things that we need to be uh, spending the time on, making sure that um, that we're effective. So I think it's been really well led from you, and your leadership has been most appreciated. Uh, but all of this uh, is for nothing. That's not for the community, and you know they've come along and they've engaged with us, told us what their priorities are. You can't please all the people all the time, you know, as they say, but we'll sure as hell try. Uh, and I think we've got to, um, to a point that I think we can be proud of. It's not perfect. Not everyone will agree with everything. Uh, and in fact, I don't think anyone will agree with everything. Um, but we've worked together well, and I really appreciate the way that we've gone through this process and look forward to doing a deep dive uh, in the, in the long-term plan next year. Thanks a lot. Jim. Um, yeah, thank you. I, look, I agree with James and Mark in terms of being able to, um, you know, really dig into stuff as we go through next year. I guess the the real um, highlight for for me out of this, and it's sort of been lost, I guess, a wee bit, is uh, the capital program. And if you think about the fundamental change, even since the time I joined, which was 2019, um, you know, the, the fact we've been able to continually refine that down, uh, and even through our letter of expectation, we've sent to the chief executive via the mayor you know, in terms of what we can deliver next year. You know, that is a fundamental change for the city, which I think we probably will continue to realise benefit from uh, long term. I did want to acknowledge Dawn, Leah, Mary, Lynn, Peter, uh, Megan and the team, Helen for not rolling out too many amendments is always useful too, uh, which is fantastic. But, you know, ultimately, you know, th these processes require us to play it with a pretty straight bat. And I think the fact we've all been able to have a really constructive conversation around the table today and get to a collective outcome as a as a factor in a, a really good a way forward that's been you know internally led by the team. So, um, you know, I think the subvention stuff, you know, I appreciate where different people are coming on, uh, coming from on that. And you know, depending on where you look at it, yeah, look, it may be a rateable impact next year, or it's an impact on debt. Um, but you know, to, to sort of not realise that opportunity now to take some pressure off the people in our community, um, you know, I think we had we had no option but to do that. Uh, but the good news is we can actually really refine that next year because. 
uh, without getting too technical, if you think about the subvention stuff, you know, that ultimately has been used to pay down debt. We can adjust our capital program next year to borrow less. So the community can be no worse off if we make some considered decisions as we work through the, the long-term plan. Um, look, the, the only other thing I'd say, and I know the team are working on it, and, and the Mayor's been very clear in terms of how the LTP will run, um, but I think we're going to have to have a very open long-term plan process. We need to share the challenges we have as a council with the community uh, so they can understand our decision-making the whole way through. And I think if we do that, we'll continue to increase trust. And, you know, I, I kind of look at the discussions we've had for the last few weeks, and actually, um, you, you know, I kind of wish every person in the city could have seen the debate, the questions, and the conversation we've had today, because it would put us in probably the best light it has for quite some time. So if we can carry that through to the long-term plan, I think the city will be in a a really good position which balances the needs of now with those of the future um, and I really want to acknowledge I think uh, Tyrone and, and Andre and, and Mark you know in terms of your commitment to work with everybody uh, as we go through that process next year you know or later this year for an outcome next year we're going to have to um, you know there are massive challenges for the city uh, but you know I'm, I'm really confident we've got a, a, an organisation internally that can deliver those results and as long as we have considered discussions as a council uh, the community can only be better off. So, yeah, thank you all for what you've done. Pauline. Thank you. Getting there, Phil, aren't we? So, look, I'm really hoping the people of Christchurch, as a majority, can appreciate the rationale behind the rate increase that we've settled on today at 6.41%. Effectively, as I said earlier, this is a rates cut, as it's below inflation, and yet we still have to deliver what the people expect of us. So we've tried to find the balance between striking an affordable rate but still allowing and enabling this organisation to deliver services to a well-functioning <coughs> city, to a well-functioning city, in challenging financial times, and that's what we are legally obliged to do. We've voted on decisions and struck a rate, and that's that for now. However, I must express my concern over using the 24 million subvention to supplement rates to deliver our services rather than even support my amendment of a compromise at half of that, which would leave us options for next year. Because of the high degree of financial uncertainty, I thought that was a good cautionary approach. My very real concern is that a large rate hike will be necessary in the near future. And rather than elected members becoming unpopular <coughs> with the public, the options of asset sales, slashing the capital program, and reducing levels of service will be the only other levers to be considered. So just beware of that. And look, yeah, thanks all round to staff and the chief executive. I'm sure that you quite often feel like the meat in the sandwich. Um, fellow councillors, thank you too. I'm sure that I know we all feel like the meat in the sandwich as well. And the residents, I know they feel like the meat in the sandwich. So it's like musical sandwiches sometimes. But look, um, it's been a real journey. And um, now we're facing another big, big piece of work looming with the long-term plan. So watch this space, be alert, and above all, beware. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. And last but not least, um, I'm happy to finally reach this point and support our annual plan. Our annual plan for 23-24 balances the need to maintain and deliver the services our community expect us to while limiting our rates burden on households and businesses. As a result of months of hard work from staff and councillors to get to this point, can I particularly thank Dawn, Lynn, Mary, Leah, all heads of staff and all council staff for who have helped us get to this point. We couldn't have done it without you. Can I also thank you all, councillors, for your focus, hard work and patience as we work through this process. Alongside this work, council staff have also begun preparations for our long-term plan, 24 to 34. This is a significant amount of work. Well, looks, looks over the next 10 years of our city. Our final annual plan only sets the scene for this. This means that the decisions we will need to make in our long-term plan, 24-34, will require us to have an honest conversation about what we can afford and what we need to look at. As a council and community, we need to decide what we can afford to pay in rates and what we can provide for that amount of money. We need a long-term plan which delivers the best balance for our community. Our community expect us to lead and make tough decisions, to deliver the right services in the right place at reasonable cost. Today is just one of many times we have to do our best to deliver on this. And for all the new councillors out there, if you think this was hard yakka, you'll be a possum in the headlights for the LTP. 
So thank you very much for your attendance, everybody. Right, so with that, I will put that, don't I? Yep. Yep. I'd like to put that motion that we accept the annual plan. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Thank you very much. Carried? I said no. Andre and Aaron. Andre and Aaron. Sorry, I, I didn't catch that. Yep. And so we're going to this one. We're now going to, for the recommend a CFO uh, authorisations, recommended recommendations 11 and 12. Having adopted the annual plan, we need to deal with the CFO authorisations in the recommendations 11 and 12. I'll move it. Pauline will second it, and we'll put it straight to the boat. All those in favour? Against? Thank you. Now, Megan is just going to have a wee chit-chat to us for a second before we start the setting of rates.